Welcome to this video. It gives an overview of the microwave absorber design and simulation software from rfhammer.com. You can download the software from rfhammer.com, save the exe and icon files to your PC, and it should run on all standard Windows 10 machines. Right, the first uh, window that opens is this one when you run the software. So um, we can select between simulation of microwave absorbers uh, over here or the design of microwave absorbers with this selection. Um, the two types of absorbers considered are the Salisbury screen and the Jarman absorber. So let's have a look at the microwave absorber simulation. So we, over here we have the two options. Let's select the Salisbury screen and we can run that. Right, so uh, here's the simulation of a Salisbury scene, a screen absorber. Uh, we have four windows. Um, the first one over here you can input the absorber parameters. Over here you can input the plot parameters. Uh, here we have a, a transmission line circuit diagram of the absorber and over here we have the uh, frequency response plot, the simulation of the absorber. Right, so the absorber parameters, um, we have the resistive layer, um, Salisbury screen only has one um, resistive layer. Um, and uh, here we can input the number of layers, one, two, or three layers. Um, and for each layer, we input the dielectric constant, the tan delta, and the thickness. Uh, usually, Salisbury screen has one dielectric layer, um, but you can uh, have a second layer, which widens the bandwidth slightly. And um, the third layer, you can then input a protective paint layer if you so desire. Uh, the frequency uh, response, the plot of the frequency response, uh, frequency start stop, number of frequencies for a nice smooth plot, frequency marker which you can set and you can move around, the incident angle uh, and then the amplitude and the phase uh, we can also select. <coughs> right so uh, let's run this example, we'll get the same response Okay, so there we have the, the same response. Um, so let's add another layer. Um, as I said, this can help to improve the bandwidth. So there we have a second layer. Okay, so the second layer, we're going to then use these uh, parameters. So let's run that. Okay, so there we have a, a source for screen with two layers. And if you wanted to have another layer, protective paint layer with a dielectric constant of 3 and a thickness of 100 microns, uh, we can make this 3 and we can run that. Okay, so um, obviously if you now go back to one layer, then it's just, just going to ignore these, these layers, uh, the second and third layer. So let's run that. Okay, so that was the amplitude. Uh, we can then... Uh, have a look at the phase and um, we can then also have a look at the influence of the incident angle so let's make this 45 incident angle okay so there we have the parallel and the perpendicular polarizations uh, for an incident angle of 45 degrees okay so uh, let's go back to a zero incident angle obviously if we uh, make this three, then the circuit diagram will show three, three layers. Okay, so that was the uh, Salisbury screen simulation. Um, let's go to the Jarman absorber simulation. So Jarman absorber has many layers, many resistive layers and dielectric layers. So this, the, dielect the resistive layers are separated by dielectric layers. Um, once again, we have the four windows which are similar. Um, for the um, absorber parameters, we can input the number of the electric layers and the number of resistive sheets or resistive layers. So um, this gives us the option um, to add an extra 
uh, the electric layer at the output of the um, absorber, of the Kalman absorber. Uh, and this is sometimes done to slightly increase the bandwidth, or you can regard it as a protective paint layer. So um, we can have one extra dielectric layer, uh, or we can make them the same. So we can have then uh, just four resistive sheets and four resistive layers, and we get this response. Um, okay, so for each layer, we can input the dielectric constant and the outer thickness, uh, the resistive sheet values as well. And uh, we can go right up to 10 layers, so we can simulate 10 layers, 10 dielectric layers. Um, and obviously, uh, if you wanted then to increase this, say, to 6 layers, uh, you would then type in values for the 6th layer, and so on to the 10th layer. But if you want to go back again just to uh, have one layer, uh, <coughs> then you can um, uh, also just ignore those values over here. Although the simulation obviously then goes from 2 to uh, 10 layers. Um, okay, so we can have two layers here if we wanted to. That's the minimum you can have. Okay, so obviously it gives that warning, so we must make this two as well. Okay, so um, <coughs> that was the uh, German absorber, once again, uh, okay, we must then obviously also make this, say, uh, let's make that 4, and make uh, this 4, we can run that, okay, once again, we can have a look at the phase, um, and the amplitude, uh, and once again, we can then have a look at the influence of the incident angle. Okay, so that was a simulation then of the Jalman absorber. Um, let's now have a look at the microwave absorber design. So once again, uh, we can select uh, the design and we have the Salisbury screen and the uh, Jalman absorber design. Let's select the Salisbury screen and we can run that. Once again, we have the four standard windows. Over here we have the absorber parameters. So we input the frequencies um, <coughs> of the... Uh, um, so in this case 10 gigahertz, so there we have center frequency of 10 gigahertz. We can have two layers uh, maximum, and then we have the dielectric constant tan delta for each layer. Uh, over here we have the um, tr transmission line uh, circuit diagram, which gives us the design parameters. So in this case, we can run this again for one layer. Uh, it gives us the design parameter of the thickness and then the resistive sheet value. Um, okay, so as I said, we can go to two layers. And two layers uh, really give us a slightly wider bandwidth, so you can notice the bandwidth over here now. So let's simulate two layers. Okay, as so you can see, we have increased the bandwidth with that design. And once again, the uh, transmission line circuit diagram gives us the design values. And similarly, we can have a look at the phase, um, and we can then also have a look at the amplitude with a certain incident angle. <coughs> so there we can see um, uh, the influence of incident angle on the absorber performance. Right, so that was the um, Salisbury screen design where we can have two layers. Let's have a look at the Jalman design. Uh, we can run that. Okay, so uh, the Jalman design, once again the same windows, uh, the absorber parameters, we can input the frequency, so in this case we have a center frequency of 10 gigahertz, we can input the bandwidth. Uh, the bandwidth is the uh, relative bandwidth, so in this case we would take the peak of the reflection coefficient, the peak of S11, and then um, take that lower frequency and similarly on this side, Again, the peak of S11 and take the higher frequency, subtract those two and then divide it by your center frequency gives us the relative bandwidth. We can input the number of uh, resistive sheets, in this case it is three, uh, and we input the dielectric constant and the tan delta uh, for the layers. So each dielectric layer then will have the same dielectric constant and tan delta. And then the design values are given here in the <coughs> transmission line. <coughs> Excuse me. 
uh, circuit diagram. So um, we can see the value of the resistive layers, the thickness of the, uh, the, of the dielectric um, layers. Okay, um, just note that um, so this uh, design, the German uh, absorber, is very simple. It's no generic algorithm or anything complicated like that. But there uh, is a trade-off between the uh, bandwidth and the value of your reflection coefficient. So in this case, we have a bandwidth of 1.25, and we're sitting at a, a maximum reflection coefficient of around about 20. So if we uh, decrease the bandwidth, let's make this 1, uh, and then the reflection coefficient will improve. Okay, so that's the trade-off you have. Um, if we make this, um, say, 5, <coughs> 1.5 relative bandwidth, then we have a uh, reflection coefficient, which is then increased to around about minus 13 uh, dB. Um, okay, also just let that... Um, if we, uh, there is a bit of a discrepancy, uh, let's go back to one here, for example. There's a bit of a discrepancy between the actual bandwidth which you input uh, and the actual um, bandwidth which is then calculated from the frequency response. There is a slight dif difference due to the method which is used to calculate the um, German absorber. Um, <coughs> we also have a restriction on the um, dielectric constant of the dielectric layers, um, greater than 1 and less than 1.35, which are typically the values you are going to use for, uh, for, dielectric, for dielectric layer, honeycomb, or whatever it's going to be. Um, and the reason for that is that um, this is to prevent the value of the resistive layers from becoming too large. Um, if the dielectric constant becomes too large, then you can give a, get large values of, resi of your resistive sheets. So this really limits, limits it to around about 25,000 um, <coughs> ohms per square, or 25k. So to prevent your layers becoming more than that, uh, this restriction has been, been imposed. Um, also, there's going to be... Um, uh, influence on the bandwidth, so there's also a trade-off between your dielectric constant and your bandwidth. So for example, let's make this 5. Um, so it tells you increase your bandwidth or decrease your dielectric constant. Okay, so let's then uh, decrease our, our dielectric constant. So let's make that as close to 1 as we can. You can't make it exactly 1, but let's make it very close to 1. Okay, we run that. <coughs> okay, and you can see your um, your peaks of your S one one have dropped down considerably, um, but then we can increase this say to one point five, and obviously your peaks will start rising again, um, and we can see we're nearly now at twenty minus twenty dB reflection coefficient. I think if we make that, uh, let's make that six. I'm not sure if it's exactly point six six. Okay, it's slightly more. Um, I think if we make for seven layers, let's try seven layers, I think 1.66 is around about nearly 20, minus 20 dB reflection coefficient. Okay, you can also notice that um, uh, the peaks of the reflection coefficient uh, are not all exactly the same, so it's not exactly equi-ripple, and that's also, uh, also as a result of the method used. It's a very simple method. Um, Okay, so over here uh, we have a slider, so uh, you can slide then to get all the values of your um, design values of your absorber. So for seven layers, we're sitting over here with the final resistive layer of th uh, 3059 uh, ohms per um, square. Okay, so um, <coughs> I think this, uh, and once again, we can uh, have a look at the phase. And uh, once again, we can have a look at the influence of the incident angle. Okay, so there you can see the perpendicular and parallel polarization for a seven layer uh, German absorber uh, with a 45 degree incident angle. Okay, so uh, hopefully uh, this will be useful. I think it gives good insight into the design of the absorbers and uh, 
one can then use the various options to uh, get a design which you uh, which be suitable thank you for uh, watching this video and remember to visit rfhammer.com there's quite a bit of uh, other software there uh, which you can also use